Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the ends of the heaven, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant more. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to this time and space that God has created especially for us. A time to gather as community and on this day of world communion. To gather with Christians around the world. To celebrate the joyful feast of God. Come and know that your God loves you, forgives you, and cares for you. Come because you are welcome. Please join me in the hymn, Nearer My God to You.
My friends, we have gathered together this morning. We have heard scripture. Now let us join our voices together in our call to worship. Creator God, we are here together in hope with community and creation, with neighbors near and far, with those known and new, with Christians across geography and across time, together in hope, let us worship. We have been called to worship. We have gathered. We have sung together. We have heard scripture. Let us invoke the name of God as we join together in our unison invocation. Holy and gracious God, let us be open to your presence among your people. Those gathered for worship and all of your people throughout your creation. May we receive you fully and respond to you wholeheartedly. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we have been called to worship. We have prayed together. Let us now confess our sins to God and to one another as we join in our confession and assurance. Gracious God, too often we take you for granted. When you call us to leave the situations that constrain us, we are too complacent to hear your voice and too timid to leave what is familiar. Make us ready to go where you lead us. Amen. Take a few seconds now in silent reflection to ask for your specific pardons needed. As we have confessed our sins, hear the words of assurance. God's grace is abundant. God's love is never ending. As children of God, receive forgiveness and blessing. Praise be to God. Our Hebrew lesson this morning comes from the book of Exodus. The 20th chapter, verses 1 and 2, 7 through 9, and 12 through 20. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor, and do all your work. Honor your father and mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, You speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you that you do not sin. Here ends our first reading. It's interesting that as we read scripture, so often we read it from where we are at and don't give a second thought to where it was written from. What was going on? And in today's scripture, we continue our journey of the Exodus. 
So God has sent Moses back. The Israelites have fled Egypt. And they are now wandering about the desert. And God comes down to give them some guidance. Some rules on how to live. And I can't help but think this is so much about today's world as well. Sit and think about this for a second. Does it not feel like we are wandering about in a desert without guidance? We don't know exactly how to do what's coming next. What are the rules now? They keep changing daily. And they keep coming from places that we don't necessarily trust or understand sometimes. And yet, we're not sure what to do, so we follow the rules. And that's not such a bad thing. But I'd like to take us back to what God is saying is important today. Here we are. We have all of this scripture. And God stops to give the Israelites some rules. I am the only God. I am the one who brought you out of slavery. You shall not make wrongful use of my name. Remember the Sabbath day. Honor your father and mother. Don't murder don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't bear false witness, and don't covet. And like us, the people were afraid. They were afraid before all of this happened. But they were relying on this person's opinion and that person's opinion, and now they get God's opinion. They get God's guidance. They get God's rules. And they don't seem so awful. Seem pretty straightforward and easy to follow. And here is the part that really ties it back to today. The rules are there. But what are they really about? You can break them down into two sections. In fact, Jesus did this, right? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, those first four of the Ten Commandments are really about having a good relationship with God. Have no other God before me. Make no graven images. Don't misuse my name and honor the Sabbath day. And then there's the transitional one. Honor your mother and father. It's about how do we have a good relationship with God. Six days you are to labor. But that seventh one, that one's for me. That's for us to have a relationship. That is for us to spend time together where you're not distracted by any of the worldly stuff that's there. God decides this needs to happen. So, first, remember who we are and that we don't have a God greater than our God. Don't make up goofy idols, things that can be taken away. Don't misuse the name of God. There's power in the name of God. We hear that in the New Testament. Wherever two or three are gathered, There I shall be. And whatever they ask in my name shall be done according to the will of God. 
There's power in that name. And then honor that day. Take time to be with God. Take a specific amount of time to just be in relationship with God. All about that relationship. And then you get to the one that I say is transitional. Honor thy father and mother. Honor the creator who creates us in the image of God. Male and female, we are created. So how do we have that good relationship with God? These folks have been wandering around the desert and for years have not had a good relationship with God. And now that they're out wandering around, they really don't know what to do. So God sets the guidelines. He says, we need to have a relationship here. You need to learn from me. Learn about me. And I need to learn about you because we've not been in good relationship. We don't talk very often. How many of us have been in relationships where we don't talk, we don't spend time, we don't get to know one another? How long do those relationships last? Not very. So God sets that aside. But God also realizes that in this process of wandering and of becoming free of all this other stuff, of Egypt and all the work and the slavery and the condemnation, the people have now gathered together and there's infighting. There's a power struggle happening within the community. People don't know exactly what's going on. And those who have power are trying to grab hold tight. Seize the power, control the group. And those without power are resisting. And they're nagging at one another and setting up rules and doing all the things that we do as human beings, rebelling against each other. This rule is made and we're going to rebel against it. This is going to happen, we'll rebel against it. Everybody is in disarray. Everything is in turmoil. And this is how they're wandering about. Even Aaron and Moses can't control what's happening because they don't even listen to them. So God sets down some rules. Here's how you be in good relationship with one another. Honor each other your father and mother especially. Honor those who are your good leaders. Don't be killing one another. And not just physically. What about the damage we do to folks in our words? How we destroy people's embodiment of who they are. by how we say things, by not watching what we say, but just letting our opinions be out there, by not caring who it is we step on when we say things a certain way. We mean well. We're trying to do what's best for everybody, but we don't watch what we're saying, and we destroy people in the process. We destroy their faith in God by throwing down ultimatums, by saying, I won't do this because. And if your faith is strong and that's where you're at, that's great. But for those whose faith is not strong, we have a responsibility to not murder their being their identity in God. Do not commit adultery. Don't be breaking your vows. Not just about husband and wife, but between you and God, between you and someone else. 
Keep your relationships in right places. Don't be breaking your word. Because that's what adultery is. You make a vow to do this, that, or the other thing, and then you don't keep that vow. Do not steal. Don't be stealing time. Don't be stealing love. Don't be stealing objects. Don't be taking what wasn't yours to start with. And this is a hard one. Because we also have those things called rights. But the hard part is, is my rights only go to where yours begin. And if I give freely of myself, then others don't have to steal from me. This is an important one in our relationships. We don't give enough, and we take too much. And in the process, we end up stealing. Now, how does that work? Let me give you a live example of how that works. Doing things in the best interest of my family. I need to keep a roof over our heads. I need to keep food on the table. So I put in extra time at work. Time that I should be spending with family. And I can break a whole bunch of rules in real short order. Watch how this one works. I promise my son I'm going to spend time with him this afternoon. I will play with him. I've made a vow. I end up working longer than I'm supposed to, and I steal that away. I break my vow. I break what I said I was going to do. I come home. It's been a long day. I'm tired. I don't watch what I say. And I look at him out of anger and say something I don't really mean and cause him to feel like he is not loved or wanted. And I kill a little piece of him. Do not bear false witness is our next one about being in relationship with one another. We all know how quick it and easy it is to get caught up in the gossip circle. Somebody leaves a blank in a sentence. And we got to fill it. These don't have to be great big deals. We don't fact check what we think or what we say. 90% of the people in the world agree with me. How do I know that? I just threw that number out there, right? Or I read something and I think, wow, that really makes sense, but I don't check the facts on it, and I post it. Or I go around spreading that information. And that information is tearing down somebody else or something else. And I am bearing false witness. And in that process, I destroy the relationships I have, because then can I be trusted? You shall not covet your neighbor's house, your neighbor's wife, or slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Shall not covet. Shall not want more than what I already have. God provides all that I need. And when I covet, now I start looking over and going, hmm, I really like that. And it leads me down bad roads. Leads me to places where I can break the rest of these. I'm no longer loving my neighbor or myself. And here's where it becomes so important to keep these relationships going well. To really hold tight and realize what building up our relationships means. Keeping the trust there. Keeping our relationship with God good and open. Keeping our relationships 
with one another, good and open, and taking responsibility of the things that we have. Especially in times like now, is so important because what else do we really have? That's a value. God gave us this. It says the relationships are the most important. Here are my rules for keeping those relationships in this troubled time. And I want you to listen very carefully to what Moses tells the people at the very end. Do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you and to put fear of him upon you so that you do not sin, so that you stay in these relationships. We are being tested daily, especially now. Tested and tried and guided. God gave us the guidance. Will we follow it? It's not about the politics. It's not about the medicine. It's about our relationships. And how are we keeping them? Regardless of what else is happening in the world, that is the most important. To have our relationship with God set right and to have our relationships with one another in good order. To remember that these relationships are just as important as my own wants and needs. Love my neighbor as myself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. My friends, these rules are all about relationships. And now, more than ever, that is tested. How are your relationships doing as we speak? Please join me in the hymn. Break now. sisters, we have all been blessed in many, many ways. As we come to this time of offering, we offer up our praise and our thanksgiving. We also offer up our vows to commit to various missions, to what we're going to give of our time and our talents and of our money. And I ask you to take this time very seriously as you make your commitments to God and then follow through with them, whether it's in finances, in time, in talent. However you choose to do it, 
in whatever you choose to do. Make that commitment now. So please join me in our offering of praise and thanksgiving as we join together in prayer. The Holy One has blessed us with salvation and hope, has given us every good thing under the heavens to do the work to which we are called. We are asked to answer those calls and to use those gifts for the good of all creation. As we enter into this time of praise and thanksgiving, give thought to the blessings and callings you have received. Make up your minds to pledge your hearts and gifts to the service of our almighty Creator. In these moments of silence, make your solemn vows of what you have decided to give of your finances, time, and talent. As we have made our vows, let us join together, united as a people, in prayer. Heavenly Creator, our blessings are too numerous to count. And yet, you continue to give without holding back, continue to call without judgment of what we might do. Take these vows we have made to you in silence and hold us to them. Work on our hearts to be more generous with the abundance of blessings you give. That your love would reach all those whom you have called us to serve. This we pray in the name of your blessed Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our Gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 21st chapter, 33-46. Hear what Jesus has to say to you. Jesus says, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to the tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect the produce. But the tenants seized the slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to these tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to people that produce the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken into pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. Here ends the reading of God's word. May it have rich blessings on your lives. It's interesting as we read and watch this. I said in the last 
message that sometimes we don't hear things except from where we're at. We don't think about where they were coming from. And Jesus shows that in this set of parables. God shows hope here. But how do we hear it? Are we like the Pharisees? Do we hear it from a place where God is against us? Or do we hear God's hope and grab hold of it? Do we see God at work in the gospel around us? Or do we see God punishing and tearing apart? How do we hear this scripture? Now Jesus tells the parable to the Pharisees and the chief priests, and then he asked them a question. He said, now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? Notice it's not Jesus that answers, but them. Their point of view was he'll put those miserable wretches to death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. That's their answer. From their perspective, the landowner will kill the tenants that were there and lease the property to somebody that's more malleable and understanding and does what they're supposed to do. How does Jesus answer them? He says, have you never read the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. And it's amazing in our eyes. Then he says, Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to people that produce the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken into pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. We need to be very cautious here and understand that Jesus gives hope again. He says, look, there's still a chance. Have you heard the scriptures? Have you heard the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And this was God's doing. And it is amazing in our eyes. It seems cryptic, right? Except Jesus is speaking of himself as the cornerstone and the fact that he's being rejected by those who are supposed to be building kingdom. They're not listening to Jesus, but condemning Jesus. And he's saying, all you have to do is step back and see that this is the Lord's doing. It's not something I'm doing, but God's doing. And be amazed. Be amazed at what God is doing in the world through the simplest of people. Through people like you and me. But if we reject the word and we only see it from where we're sitting and we start using scripture to back what we want, we miss the point. Remember, God gave us the guidance in the last scripture we read that this is all about our relationships. Our relationships with God, our relationships with one another. And Jesus came in love, healing in love, not looking at who was worthy and who wasn't, because who among us is worthy? None of us. That's the honest to God truth. None of us could possibly do enough to be worthy of the love 
and grace and mercy God shows to us. It's just not possible. So we need to quit rejecting the cornerstone of love that is Jesus Christ and to get back to building the kingdom. And how is the kingdom built? But through relationships. How do we treat one another? How do we see ourselves and how do we place ourselves in the position of another so that we do not fall on the cornerstone? And we're not crushed if it falls on us. You see, you can't be crushed or destroyed if you're truly loving. Then I don't stumble. I don't fall into the trap. What's even more important in this passage, though, is what comes next. Because the Pharisees heard it from where they were at. They knew they were in the wrong, and they didn't like what Jesus had to say. And because they didn't like what Jesus had to say, they wanted to arrest him. But they were afraid. They were afraid of everyone else and how they regard it. It is so important to understand that when Jesus talks about the relationships and says this is what's most important, what are people going to think if we don't grab hold of what the world wants us to do? Wherever you're at, wherever you find truth in the world, what would happen if we set that aside and said what's most important is our relationships? I can't stop what's happening in the world, but I can continue to minister. I can continue to send out that gospel. I can continue to help. I may not be able to do it the way I used to do it, but the mission can still be there. How we hear God's hope depends on where we're sitting. And if we're not willing to step back and hear it from a place different from where we're at right now, we are going to be like the Israelites wandering around the desert in need of guidance. And God gave us the guidance. Now the question becomes, how do I help community. What does the community really need? Does the community have what it needs? And if not, how do I provide that? How can I work within the system I'm now caught up in to give what is needed to those who are searching, who are in need, who are lost. How do I continue to reach out and give hope to those who feel no hope? The system isn't going to change. The world has been broken since Adam and Eve. And it remains broken, and we adapt, and we live, and we allow God to work through and in us. Remember, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is God's doing, and we are amazed. What can God do in and through you? Well, it starts with having the relationship here, then building our relationships here, finding out what's actually needed setting our wants, desires, and thoughts aside in order to serve and allow God to work in and through us. It may not be the way we've always done it. 
doing it in person isn't comfortable for many. So how do we now reach out? Finding out what people need is going to be done in different ways. They're not just coming to the door anymore. We're going to have to find a way to go to them. But we're going to have to build the relationships so that they can trust. So they know they're not going to be beat up if they don't think like we think. So that they know that we are in the same boat they are. That we need God. And that this is in God's hands. God speaks hope. The question is, is how do you hear it? Are you like the Pharisees? Who want to hear the hope, but don't want to hear it if it isn't what we think? How we feel? Or are you going to be one of those who sits back, listens, is in relationship with God, takes the time, builds relationships here, and finds hope in the amazing things God can do in and through you? May God bless all that you do. May you come to hear God's hope in new and wonderful ways. And may you strengthen your relationships, not only with God, but with others, by thinking of self second and service first. Peace be with you all. And all God's people said, Please join me in the hymn as we gather at your table.
as we come together today for the sacrament of Holy Communion, we ask you all to understand and acknowledge that all Christians, regardless of denomination, tradition, or age, are welcome at the table of our Lord as we practice it here at Roberts Congregational United Church of Christ. Today we will bless the elements which you have with you, some bread and wine or grape juice, and we will partake in this meal together in spirit and in truth. Beloved in Christ, the gospel tells us that on the first day of the week, Jesus Christ was raised from death, appeared to Mary Magdalene, on that same day sat at table with two disciples, and was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the joyful feast of the people of God, men and women, youth and children, come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and gather about to Christ's table. God be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God Most High. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We give you thanks, God of majesty and mercy, for calling forth the creation and raising us from dust by the breath of your being. We bless you for the beauty and the bounty of the earth and for the vision of the day when sharing by all will mean scarcity for none. We remember the covenant you've made with your people Israel, and we give you thanks for all our ancestors in faith. We rejoice that you call us to reconciliation with you and all people everywhere, and that you remain faithful to your covenant even when we are faithless. We rejoice that you call the entire human family to this table of sacrifice and victory. We come in remembrance and celebration of the gift of Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be the good news. Born of Mary, our sister in faith, Christ lived among us to reveal the mystery of your word, to suffer and to die on the cross for us, to be raised from death on the third day, and then live in glory. We bless you, gracious God for the presence of your Holy Spirit in the church you have gathered. With your sons and daughters of faith in all places and time, we praise you with joy. Holy, 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 God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God, Hosanna in the highest. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, and on the eve of death, Jesus gathered his disciples for the feast of the Passover. Jesus took the bread, and after giving thanks to you, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ's death, O God, we proclaim. Christ's resurrection, we declare. Christ's coming, we await. Glory be to you, O God. Eternal God, we unite in this covenant of faith, recalling Jesus' suffering and death, rejoicing in Christ's resurrection and awaiting Christ's return and victory. We spread your table with these gifts of earth in our labor. We present to you our very lives, committed to you and your service in behalf of all people. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit on this bread and wine, on your gifts and on us, Strengthen your universal church, that it may be the champion of peace and justice in all the world. Restore the earth with your grace, that is able to make all things new. Be present with us as we share this meal and throughout all our lives. 
that we may know you as the Holy One, who with Christ and the Holy Spirit lives forever. Amen. Let us join in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. This cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is the body of Christ, which is broken for you. Take and eat. This cup is the new covenant made in Christ's blood. Take. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by Christ's body and blood that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love and that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, we pray. Amen. My friends, we have been blessed. We have been called. We have worshipped together. We have praised God. We have offered up to God our solemn vows. We have celebrated the good news of Jesus Christ and the salvation that we have received from God. Now may you go in peace. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Please join me in the hymn, Jesus Took.
My friends, I'm glad you were able to be here with us today. I hope that you have found at least something to hold on to this week, something to think about, to share, to enjoy, something that feeds you and moves you forward in the journey. We praise God for your presence, for who you are, and we lift you up in prayer. Now, I would ask that you do the same for us, that you hold up the missions of this church in prayer, that if you're able, you come and join us in what we do here at the church. And if it's possible, and you're willing, that you help support us monetarily by hitting the Donate Now button and helping us to continue the ministries we do, not only just in this community, but through the greater world, through the denomination, and through the work that we have through other organizations we work with. May God bless your week, your time, and all that you do as you carry through on the vows that you've had this week. God bless you again.